I, I think from, from the international investors and to, into EM and particularly into India, there are some reassuring sounds about you know, India being open for business, about the, the ease of business improving in India, and that's a message we've heard for a while. Um, but I guess it doesn't do a lot to dispel some of the disappointment that, that's emerged around the lack of big bang reforms uh, on, on the ground in India so far. I think so. I, th I think potentially you know, more, more concrete detail on how, how the big banner reforms are going to be achieved would have been, would have been welcomed. I appreciate it's a, it's a difficult topic to, to, to broach, but that was really what I would love to have seen. But it's not something you're going to see on a diplomatic mission like this. I, mean, I think the big problem for India, you know, given the persistent inflation problem, although it's come off a bit this year, the big problem is on the infrastructure side. And we are seeing a few, a few bits of progress there. But really, you know, the, the dedicated freight corridor is still being held up by land acquisition problems. Um, and I think you need several reforms all at once just to, to fix problems that India has, because the freight corridor can't proceed without land acquisition. Land acquisition, you need to have some way of compensating the, the people who lose out, which requires the ad houses to be, to be completely rolled out and for payments to be less subject to corrupt officials taking a share. So I think there's lots of things that need to come together uh, for the Indian story to re, really take off. I, th I think it's good to, to, to take stock and to have provide a counterpoint to the usual fanfare that goes along with official visits because it can be very easy to get swept up in the headline announcements and the diplomatic me uh, me message but really you need to focus on the details and what's actually changed uh, in, in reality. So this is very useful.